Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we had a rather fulsome discussion at lunch about the Ukraine situation. Um, very timely, very troubling, and uh, a variety of different points of view about the best way uh, to discourage uh, President Putin from what he apparently is up to. My view remains that sanctions after the incursion are less effective than sanctions before. And I hope the administration will bear that in mind as they move forward. They have a lot of latitude on their own, but there are plenty of discussions, as you know, about a bipartisan approach here in the Senate. And uh, we discussed that at length at lunch. Um, in addition to that, we are awaiting, of course, as all of you are, a Supreme Court nominee. And uh, it's pretty hard to comment on the nominee until you get one. But obviously, this is a very significant position. And I think you would anticipate the Senate Republican <coughs> minority, <coughs> Senate Republican minority. Uh, treating the nominee with, with respect and going through the process <clears throat> in, a, in a serious, thoughtful way. And the, uh, <clears throat> just in terms of even the way that the announcement on uh, Justice Breyer's resignation was rolled out, uh, it, it got leaked <clears throat> by the Democrats, I think, because they are trying to distract from many other things that uh, they don't really want to talk about. And um, as the leader pointed out, we will make sure that whoever they, he ultimately nominates, it's a thorough, fair vetting, uh, respectful process. Um, but it uh, certainly is not going to take away from the many things that the Democrats don't want to talk about, because we're going to continue to talk about the fact that inflation is at the highest level that it's been in 40 years and the impact that's having on the pocketbooks of uh, uh, just uh, Americans all over the place. Um, the fact that the border uh, this last year, we saw more illegal crossing attempts, uh, two million, than any time we've seen uh, in history. On the national security front, um, the administration clearly seems like they've been kind of behind the, the curve uh, consistently, even with what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and uh, evidenced by the fact that when we had a week, a few, or a vote a few weeks ago on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, uh, the administration was rallying the Democrats to, to vote against it. Uh, the Putin pipeline vote was something that would have been uh, a, a, you know, a very powerful message, we think, to have sent to the Russians and obviously to uh, our Ukrainian allies. They, they held up the defense authorization bill for months because they were trying to pass their reckless tax and spending spree. And they didn't even get around to naming a Ukrainian ambassador until yesterday. So it just seems like um, this administration has uh, failed to focus on the things that are really important. And uh, as a consequence, uh, the American people are experiencing the very harmful impacts of uh, inflation and uh, everything that their policies have done to the economy. And on the national security front, the first job of any administration is to make sure that you're protecting the American people and, uh, and making sure that American interests around the world are protected as well. And that is something I think that has been sorely lacking in, in their focus. Um, I always say if you don't get national security right, the rest is conversation. And it seems at least that the administration um, clearly uh, is uh, coming up with any other thing they can do to distract from the items that are front and center and should be their focus. You know, I would think the item that's uh, front and center right now for most American families is the trip to the grocery store, the trip to the gas station, your home heating bill comes to your house. None of those are, hard, are, are things you can totally avoid, and all of those are bad news right now. We saw this week some indication that there had been a significant uh, growth in income, but you compare that growth in income to the inflationary cost and it's not, it's not a growth in income at all to working families or to most Americans. At the same time, the reckless spending spree is still reckless, still talking about, the best I can tell, exactly the same things. Nobody's willing to give up anything, no matter how much that level of spending hurts the economy or raises the cost of a lot of things that families can't uh, avoid. And on the tax side, 
still a healthy interest in tax breaks for the richest Americans and tax increases for almost everybody else. Uh, the uh, shifting to a new look at that doesn't appear to be happening. Uh, and uh, what is happening every day is the, re is the results of the energy policies uh, and the other policies, starting with the $1.9 trillion to help an economy that recover that was already recovering. And what's happened is that economy has over-recovered in ways that families are seeing every single day. This past week, I was able to go out across Iowa on what we call the full Grassley, uh, the 99 county tour. So I was able to visit 13 separate counties last week, and a lot of the same topics kept coming up over and over again, regardless of the type of visit, whether it was a group of farmers, whether it was a manufacturing business, or so forth. So while I was in Oskaloosa, I met with a group of uh, public leaders, economic development leaders. We came together, and the top two issues that kept coming up over and over again were inflation. We're at a 40-year high with inflation. They're worried about all of their citizens. They're worried about their businesses. And the second issue was the supply chain issues that we are, are experiencing right now. Um, I went on to a visit in Jones County, and I visited a, a furniture business. And this is what we saw going through the warehouse. There are empty shelves. Okay, this business is suffering because they cannot get goods into the United States. The supply chain is broken. The ports are broken. We got an earful on that and the costs associated with it. And then also the inflation that has come along with the exorbitant spending coming out of this administration, causing the price of goods to go up. So everything is snowballing and exacerbating these issues. And this is not just in Iowa. This is all across the United States. So we are trying to hold the Biden administration accountable with this. One, by trying to limit their spending uh, that is unnecessary at this point in time, and also by introducing acts like the Price Act, which would require a statement that goes along with any spending that says what it will do um, to the cost of goods that our citizens have to purchase, as well as impact to paychecks. So there's a number of solutions that Republicans are coming up with to help combat some of the issues being exacerbated by the Biden administration. Folks, we have got to do better for our citizens. We have got to do better. Inflation and the supply chain, we can start with those. Every four years, we are usually Americans are pretty excited because we have the Olympics coming up. Uh, the Olympics start uh, this Friday. Unfortunately, they're in China. And what this is going to be is simply Olympics is going to allow communist China to whitewash their human rights atrocities. Last Monday, right here, I did a press conference with uh, some Uyghurs uh, activists and Hong Kong activists. And they talked about the, uh, in Hong Kong, the Chinese government took away their basic rights. The Uyghurs, a million Uyghurs are in prison. I mean, they're completely annihilating the, the Uyghur population. The, I've called for years the IOC uh, to move the Olympics. They didn't do it. The Biden administration called on the Biden administration to do something. They did nothing. So now we have our athletes over there. I hope they're safe. Uh, I hope our sponsors know that what they should be doing is talk about the atrocities that are going on over there. What NBC ought to be doing is talk about the atrocities that are going on over there. We should not allow Ch communist China to whitewash the, what they're doing, whether it's what they're doing to the Uyghurs, what they've done to the Hong Kong citizens, or the threats to Taiwan right now. Yeah. You know. uh, how concerned are you about the former president offering pardons to people who attacked the Capitol on January 6th? And, and because of his comments, does he have the moral authority to be president again? Well, I can speak for myself. Uh, the election of 2020 was decided December the 14th of 2020 when the Electoral College certified the winner of the election. What we saw here on January the 6th was an effort to prevent the peaceful transfer of power from one administration to another. 
which had never happened before in our country. 165 people have pleaded guilty to criminal behavior. None of the trials have been finished yet, but 165 have pleaded guilty to criminal behavior. My view is I would not be in favor of shortening any of the sentences for any of the people who pleaded guilty to crimes. Leader McConnell, Leader. how many black women do you have on staff, and how are they informing your decision to move forward with the SCOTUS nomination? And the same question to the other senators. How many what? How many black women do you have on your staff, and are they informing your decision on how to move forward with the SCOTUS nomination? And the same question to the other senators. For, for your Sorry. Yes. <laughs> how many black women do you have on staff, and how are they informing your decision yeah, to move I, forward with the SCOTUS nomination? Uh, same I, question actually, to the other yeah, senators. Yeah, actually, I haven't checked. We don't have a racial quota in my office, but I've had a number of African-American employees, both male and female, over the years in all kinds of different positions, including speechwriter. Leader McConnell, we've been talking yeah. about sanctions on Russia for quite a while now, but some of the sanctions that are under discussion would really only target small banks. Um, it really wouldn't cripple the top three banks in Russia or really cripple the Russian economy in any way. What are the top sanctions that you would support that you feel like would stop Putin? Yeah, why don't you pull your mask down and try again? Um, we've been talking about sanctions for so long on Russia. What are the top sanctions you feel would actually stop Putin in his tracks? Because some of the stuff that's being talked about would only affect small banking institutions, really wouldn't cripple the Russian economy in any way. What are what do you feel like you could support that would actually stop him? Well, I'm not an expert on this, but the, 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 the Uber sanctions, the ones that really could bring the Russians to their knees, are related to the banking system. And I know the President, according to what he said publicly, has been discussing the possibility of that happening uh, with Putin. But to go back to my initial statement, I think what we ought to be doing right now, before the invasion occurs, send the Ukrainians weapons they can fight with, anti-tank uh, weaponry, ground-to-air missiles. Give them a chance to inflict some real damage on the Russians if they, in fact, come in. It's also important, I think, to beef up NATO presence in countries like Poland and the Baltics. And those NATO troops ought to include some American troops as further evidence to our Eastern NATO uh, members and allies that we're going to have their back if the Russians decide to try to take a NATO country. Can I, uh, yeah. you, you express some support for that. You know, the, the bipartisan group that's looking at that appears to be looking at things beyond the text of that statute, things like funding, yeah. and things like uh, protecting election officials. Is that going to gain Republican support? Yeah, I, the, the, the best way to characterize how I feel about the Electoral Count Act is that it is flawed and, and does need to be fixed. Uh, where it goes from here, we'll have to see. I think the bipartisan group is working on trying to come up with a proposal. Uh, I, I don't have any particular view beyond that, other than that particular law is clearly flawed and needs to be updated. President Trump's statement over the weekend saying that uh, the former vice president could have overturned the election, does that increase the urgency for Congress to act on that law? What, what were you that on? was the same question. Yeah, I've already addressed. No doubt China is watching very closely to see what sort of sanctions are going to be brought against Russia. Do you think if not enough is brought against Russia that China could actually start thinking about invading Taiwan? Well, we're worried about how the Chinese read our reaction to the Russian potential incursion into Ukraine as it relates to Taiwan. There's no question about it. I, I think our big power adversaries, the Russians and the Chinese, watch what happened in Afghanistan have serious doubts about whether America will stand with its allies. So I think how we handle the Ukrainian situation does have implications in the Pacific as well. Leader McConnell, would, would Lend to Lead